How many are familiar with the UK mature, bit maturity model? Okay. So this is going to, I like to be controversial, and I've gotten in trouble for this in the past, but I think it's time to actually cut to the chase and actually push things out and say, where, where are we going with all this? So this is a, it's, it's been a great thing because it's raised awareness about the type of things that go into, you start from CAD, you go into 2D and 3D, and the 2016 mandate says that you, you'll start using uh, file exchanges with open standard formats. Uh, wonderful and very important. I'm not saying this is bad, I'm just saying that's, that's where things are. But the part that I think needs to be looked at again, the concept of a level three, which they're not there yet, is where the data button is right now, which kind of implies that we can't manage data until we get to level three, or we can't manage processes, or we can't manage the life cycle. And I think that's a problem, just conceptually. Even though, if, even if it doesn't intend to spread this message, it is spreading this message that we can't get to level three until we perfect level two. So it's a very linear progression of building up standards and building up capability, which is no longer valid in this world around us has, that has completely changed. Everything has changed about our expectation of access to information, being able to do stuff with information. So I want to shift this a little bit and say, okay, what if we break this up? All these concepts are great, but what if we try and break this up and do some cross-cutting? And my belief is that data is valid at any level. Even without any 2D, it's valid, right? We do that with our mobile phones. We don't have a 2D map of the building or, uh, to find information about uh, uh, where's, um, can I reserve a, a room in this hotel? That's a location-based thing without a model, but it's related to this location, so I can reserve a room in this hotel. So it's valid at any level. And if, it's, if we think of in these terms, that means there's opportunities, there's low-hanging fruit to focus on the data and think about how it moves, moves its way up into level three. We call this minimum viable BIM. <clears throat> how many have heard the term minimum viable product? Okay, in software development, in agile software development, which is the way to go today, you start in small increments and you start building functionality rapidly and just put it out there. And if it fails, Great, you just throw it away and keep moving and build the next thing. If the uh, interface is no good, you throw it away. You, you keep iterating and building. So minimum viable BIM, we're not saying it's minimum in functionality. We're saying it could be minimum in geometry, but maximum data and impact, big data. And it's not bad if you have maximum 3D geometry as well on top. It's not one or the other. It's just both. The linearity of this diagram implies that you need a lot of geometry and a lot of BIM to do great stuff with processes and the life cycle, which is absolutely false. So cross-cutting to get there faster allows us to create value and identify how we fit into this ecosystem, how we can bring value to owners, because we're already there. We're already dealing with the data. So let's, let's just run to this. So the, the, the maturity model, I said, what if we shake this up a little bit and kind of turn it on its side and think in terms of the web services that have been referenced in level three, the data, the processes, the CAD, and build these up like little Lego blocks. And take this and basically shift it 90 degrees. <clears throat> if we rotate it 90 degrees and then break this apart and say, okay, there's applications. There's different applications for CAD, 2D, 3D, BIM. And remember that I said applications are disposable now. It's no longer you have to buy in. And we, it's going to be a hybrid environment. We're obviously going to be using a lot of very powerful, very important applications for BIM and CAD and whatever. But if you take the applications <clears throat> and you split, decouple the data from them, and you think in terms, okay, what happens if we can get to that data regardless of what application we use? Most applications that have been built in the past, they fuse the data to the application and they try and sell, and this is coming from a software understanding of how things happen in the software world, they sell you that functionality. They say, look how great a tool we have, put your data in our tool, and use our tool forever. And if you want to leave our tool, we're going to make it very expensive and painful for you to take our data and move it into something else. Then we start talking about standards. We need standards, because of this complexity, we need standards to cross-connect and exchange data, COBE, IFC, XML, DWG. These are the standards discussions that have been happening for years. We need to standardize on what we call things so we can get data from one application, BIM application, to the next. All important stuff, but it's still a file-based exchange. It's still a file-based exchange of getting stuff out of a big application to another application. 
We do not do file-based exchanges with our mobile devices. We don't go to um, uh, an airline scheduling site uh, to Expedia and download the entire flight schedule for the day into our mobile device and then do a search. We do a query, it hits a database from multiple vendors, multiple databases, and brings us options which we then push a button which then does a transaction with a bank that buys us that ticket on that plane. That's the world we live in today. We don't live in a file exchange world. The building industry still does, so we have to figure out how we break that, that, uh, that challenge. So if we decouple the data from the application, <clears throat> this is essentially a level three discussion, and then we build web services, rules that say, how do I get to that data? So if the data is neutral and there's ways of how do I get to data, it means that Jeremy can go and build applications to build 3D gaming engines that get to data. You don't really care where it came from. You can start just molding it together. A Pokemon Go can come and say, well, I see a mapping application. I have a gaming thing, and I could build a game application. It's not a BIM, but it's a gaming application on a map. That completely opens a whole new world. And these applications that are being built out there today can be built in some in just minutes or hours in many cases, very simple ways to build uh, um, simple mobile devices, access applications. So that's, and these, <clears throat> and this is another misconception, data does not have to be in one giant big bucket in the center of the world somewhere. That's, that's a fallacy. It's going to be in multiple locations, authoritative sources of information. So airline schedules, for example. Delta has a database of flight, flight schedules and, and their strategy of how they price tickets, and American Airlines has this as well, and we use our apps to say we want to find a flight. We don't care where that data comes from, but it's, there's stuff happening in the background. Meanwhile, from the business side and the strategy, somebody else is opening up a dashboard at Delta and saying, wow, there's demand going up here, and we're going to change this, and there's algorithms that, that do that negotiation. So all that stuff is happening. It's starting to churn either automatically or, or through people interacting with it. The web service about how you get get to that data does not also have to be in one central location. It could be a bunch of different web services. These are basically the rules that say if you are a consumer of flight schedule data, then you can go and search for flight schedules and you can buy it. If you're a Delta executive and you want to see how are you doing with pricing your tickets, then you can get to that and, and see what's going on. If you want to look at the weather data and see what the risk is of flying planes in this part of the country, then you can go and find the weather data that's public on the web. So it's a combination of tons of data out there and tons of data services, web services, that allow us to do this. So what I just described is the world that we all live in today for many years. We're already doing that with our mobile applications. And the challenge is how do we move, shift the building industry into that world? Because that's where the opportunity really is. <clears throat> So what I just described here is not just a theory of where we're going to go. This is, I'm going to show you bits and pieces of this. This is already starting to happen. It's starting to happen in ways that is creating new opportunities. Even in the last few days at the Content Summit, I've had discussions with different Lego blocks on top of different applications that can plug into this. And that future functionality, we don't have to predefine. Future applications are going to start jumping into this. More uh, consultants, builders, Architects and others are starting to build their own applications and plug into this, and I think that's the, the opportunity. So that's a commentary on the level three um, uh, maturity model, which I think it's fantastic what's happening in the UK because it's pushed the discussion forward, but I think we need to jiggle it a little bit and uh, look at how we uh, re-look at that. 